Welcome to your Daily Five for Thursday, June 29th, 2023. I was reading an article over on Kotaku about a game from apparently back in 2012. I did not realize this game was that old, but it's a 2D anime fighting game called Skullgirls that has recently received an update that has a portion of the fan base for the game pretty upset. Now, they're upset for the wrong reason, I'm going to get into that, but there is actually a legitimate concern within this update that is not really anything new. I've talked about it before. Many others have talked about it, but this is a reinforcement of why this is an important thing to keep bringing up. And that is why physical editions of media are important and why they matter. So as far as the update for this, which this game did have a very limited, from what I understand, physical release, at least in its original incarnation, it looks like there's going to be another one for a big revamp they're doing of it. There's some kind of big new edition coming, and apparently, although it's that apparently is also tied up in rights, so you know, back and forth rights on something, so we'll see if it ever comes out. But there was some type of limited, very limited physical release, but it was mostly available in digital form, digital storefronts, digital codes, all that type of thing, as many games are now. And there were changes that were recently instituted because the game changed studios in 2020 after the lead of the previous studio was accused of being some type of sex pest. And so it was moved to a different studio. And as part of changes for this upcoming edition, they've removed certain elements which were seen as overly sexualized and as... This, I, don't, the, I don't remember the exact term they use, but basically the game references or uses the visual language of fascism and Nazis specifically. And so they toned that down a bit. They felt it was because of real world events that it was not something that they wanted in their game. So they were removing things like armbands, red armbands which apparently was enough to cause people to lose their minds. And I started seeing things about the... the most laughably stupid term that we have in modern, well, one of the most laughably stupid modern terms, self-censorship that people use as if it's something that everyone doesn't do every single day of their lives, depending on what situation they're in. Guess what, everybody? We all self-censor. Stop using that as some kind of term to mean something. It's meaningless. But anyway, outside of the complaints about the actual changes themselves, which are almost without any merit, I watched a video showing the changes and they're so minimal that, that I couldn't even be bothered to finish the video because, as the article says, it's like one of those Where's Waldo things if you're looking for these differences. They are not a big deal. But, whatever. What they do reinforce is why there need to be physical editions of media from the get-go. Because if somehow these changes really have destroyed your ability to enjoy the game... I don't believe is true for anybody, but let's say it is, then you would have the physical version that you bought back in 2012, 13, whenever it came out, that you would just be able to keep playing. That also means no more of the internet network requirements that games now have. That's garbage. It's been garbage from the beginning. This is another reason why. You know, the only thing that would really be impacted probably is if you play online. Most of the time, games have to be at a certain level to play them online in some kind of multiplayer fashion. So you would lose that. But I would say that if this is so disturbing your enjoyment that you can't play it offline, then you certainly wouldn't be able to handle playing it online. And plus, these seem like story elements as opposed to online multiplayer. So I'm guessing if you're bothered by this, you're playing the single player portion more often or more importantly to you anyway. Uh, so you wouldn't be as disturbed by that. But it does reinforce why physical editions matter. I've said many times, I have no problem with George Lucas going in and fan editing his movies to oblivion. My problem is that we don't have the originals that we can buy so that we can see the original versions. We don't have those in a high definition format. Certainly no 4Ks of it, no Blu-rays. I think the last ones we got were DVDs maybe. And that's the problem. Not that George Lucas alters his art. I will always, I've said it the whole time I've done the show and ever commented on this, I'm going to say it forever. Artists are free to destroy their art in whatever way they want. That is their right. They created it. They can do whatever they want to it. So everybody can shut up about that. But do I think that we should be able to enjoy the original versions of them? Yeah, I think we should. If they existed in a form at one time, we should be able to see those things. Those should be preserved in some ways, especially things like video games where, forget even the artistic changes, there are often patches and, and updates that break parts of the game that were working. So even just that, if you have a game that works and you never want to update it, you shouldn't be forced to. You should have a way, a way to play that original one that doesn't involve going to some, you know, dark website or whatever and pulling down an, an ISO that somebody hacked and cracked to pieces to be able to make it work. I mean, nobody should have to go through that type of effort to be able to play a game. So I understand that these people are upset. My thing is they're upset about the wrong thing. Later.